Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are here to film my top three in every category. I've seen this video floating around. I can't remember if I've actually filmed it before or not. I feel like I have not. If I for some reason have, I will link that one down below to, to check it out, but I don't think that I've filmed this before because there are some categories that like I don't necessarily have three favorites in, so we're just going to skip over those, but I thought that I would share with you my top favorite products or top three favorite products in different categories. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly and I love all things makeup and beauty. I love talking. I love makeup. I love talking about makeup, so if you'd like to chat about makeup too, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of the Kay Bella fam, why don't we go ahead and jump into the video. If my lighting looks a little off for this video, I apologize, but I'm trying something a little different. Typically when I film, I do have my bedroom light on and the windows open and I'm using my ring light, but I feel like it kind of gives the background I don't know, a different shade of white than I would like. So we're trying something different. I'm trying it with the light off. So if it seems a little dark or if there's shadows, that's why. But I wanted to start, I'm gonna run through all of the categories that I have three products that are favorites in. So like the first one, I'm not talking about any primers because I really only have two primers and I use them both every single day. If you've followed me for a while, you know that it's my Glow Recipe and Niacinamide Dew Drops and my Tatcha the Liquid Silk Canvas. Those are the only two primers that I use. So after I finish my skincare, I go in with my Glow Recipe, put it all over the face. I will take my Tatcha and put it just where my pores are larger and on the forehead and call it a day. So I don't really have three primers in, in this category. Those are the only primers that I'm using at the moment and I use them both. But I do have three foundations that I want to share with you. The foundation that I am wearing today is by Patrick Ta and it is actually the Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. And I have to say, I do not use the finishing powder. I just use the foundation. You can tell here I've hit major pan. I decided to add this to my project pan after I already hit pan. And I was like, you know what? I honestly feel like I could use this up. I just take my sponge, I rub my sponge in there and I dot it all over the face or blend it in with my sponge. I really like it because I feel like it gives me a hydrated, dewy look to the skin. It looks very healthy. I do have dry skin. It gives me like a nice finish, but I will say, I live in Texas and in the summer, we are getting like triple digits, okay? The humidity is off the charts, like it's insane. And this does have a little bit of slip and slide to it. So if you don't have dry skin, if you have more normal combo oily skin, just know that this may not be your favorite, okay? I do also, like I, I feel like my face is set down now because I did put powder everywhere. I don't typically powder my whole face, but with this foundation, especially in the summer, I feel like I need to because I will get a little bit of transfer. It's just not the most secure foundation, but I've been reaching for it a ton because I really do like the way that it makes my skin look. The next foundation is an absolute fave and has been for a really long time. And it's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is the smaller size. I had a full size, used more than half of it before it went bad. I had had it for a couple years. I just love this foundation. I am in the shade four. The Patrick Ta, I'm in light one. In the Armani, I'm in four. I used to have like 4.5, I think, and it just wasn't the right shade for me. I feel like four is my perfect shade. I love this foundation because again, it will give me a nice luminous finish. I feel like with the Patrick Ta, I do have more of like a light to medium coverage. You're not really going to be able to build it up to a full coverage. It definitely sits more of a medium coverage. I would say the same thing with the Giorgio Armani. I get a little bit more coverage with this than the Patrick Ta, but it's still more of a medium coverage. It does give me a luminous finish. I feel like the Patrick Ta is a little bit dewier. This one is just more of like a satin finish, I would say. I also don't have transfer with this one. I don't have to set it completely down. It's not going to slip or slide on the face. It feels very comfortable, looks very luminous, and it just makes my skin look like my skin, but healthier. 
The third foundation is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I have the shade L for DeVille. I like NARS foundations. I've tried several throughout the years. I really, really like this one though. I would say this probably gives me the most coverage out of the three that I'm talking to you about, but this one still, I would not even classify as full coverage. I would say it gives me more of a medium coverage. This one I feel like sits a little heavier on the skin than the Luminous Silk and the Patrick Ta, but it's still not not uncomfortable. It gives me a nice, again, luminous look without being too dewy. It's not like shiny. It's not slipping all over the face, but it is called a light reflecting foundation because when the light hits your face, it is going to like reflect back and just make your skin look healthy. And honestly, that's what I'm looking for in a foundation. I want it to look like my skin but better right like i want my skin to look even i want it to look nice i do have freckles i appreciate the freckles peeking through but i also don't want a sheer color that's why i'm not a huge skin tint person like i do want there to be some coverage so i i really find that i like the medium coverage foundations like this one like the nars where it's going to kind of make my skin look a little bit more airbrush but give me a little bit of luminosity to bring some life back up into this dry skin I do have three concealers to share with you, but one is technically a color corrector. So we'll start with that one. I love the Sigma Color Correcting Duo. I have the shade Light Medium. This was sent to me by Sigma. I did recently get on their PR list and I was super excited because I wanted to purchase this myself, but they had been sold out on the website. So I was kind of waiting for it to come back in stock. I got a PR package from them. This was included and I was super excited. I really like this because I typically mix the two shades together but this one is a little bit more similar to my skin tone so if I do have a blemish or something I can use this concealer to cover up the blemish but typically I'll dip into both of them with my finger just tap right underneath my eyes but on the inner part of my eyes where I have some darkness and it will kind of like hide the darkness without being too thick again dry skin Okay, so I want my under eyes to look luminous and glowy also, but I do have dark circles that I wanna cover up and this really does it for me. It's not too cakey, it's not too heavy. I do have fine lines under my eyes. Anything I put under there is going to sink into them, but it's not gross or gunky or in like a bad manner. It just, it sits nice on the skin does what I need it to do. It is spectacular. The other two concealers I do use in like together in conjunction with each other, but I would use the Pat McGrath concealer on its own. This is the, uh, what's it called? Skin Fetish Sublime Perfecting Concealer, long name. The reason why I use this in conjunction with the next one is because this is shade L5, and I feel like L4 may have been a better match for me. I think I had L4 in the past. I don't know what made me get L5. I had been using it and then looked at it one day and I was like, I think L4 is the one that I had before, but I love this concealer because it's going to give you more of a full coverage, again, to cover up those dark circles, to hide any kind of discoloration I have going on, but it's a creamy formula that doesn't stick to dry patches. It blends out nicely while giving me coverage, and that's what I really love about it. However, my third concealer that I do mix with the Pat McGrath is the Milani Conceal and Perfect. This is the Longwear Concealer. I have 115 Light Nude. This one is too light for me. So again, if I had maybe a deeper shade, I would use this on its own, but you can see next to my skin tone, it's very, very light. So I typically use this in conjunction with a deeper one, the Pat McGrath. You can see here the shade difference, and what I'll do is I'll just dot a little bit of each of them and blend it out. And again, the Milani Drugstore, you're not gonna see much of Drugstore in here, just warning you, but the Milani is drugstore pricing. Again, it still gives me that coverage that I'm looking for to cover the dark circles while also not being too heavy for my dry under eyes. I'm not going to talk to you about an all over setting powder because I don't typically set my entire face. What I do set is underneath my eyes and my forehead wrinkles. Other than that, I don't like to powder my entire face. I only have one in my collection currently, so I'll start with that one. It is by Sigma. This is the Soft Focus Setting Powder in Vanilla Bean. I had a girlfriend send this over to me because it actually launched I wanna say this time last year, but I was getting ready to have my son. I was in the hospital, so a girlfriend got a few of these sent to her in PR and she sent this one over to me because she wasn't going to use it. And I really like this one. I'll put it right underneath my eyes and on my forehead. It's not heavy, it's not cakey. It blends in nicely with the skin without sticking to dry patches. However, my absolute favorite of the bunch, and I'll insert a picture of it, is the Hourglass 
Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Now that one I had a mini of. I recently finished it and it's in my empties container, but I was looking for it the other day and I couldn't find it. I like that one just a little bit more because I feel like it is a little bit more finely milled. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit softer. So I can still, I use a sponge anytime I'm using setting powder, but I can take my sponge, dip it in, put it underneath the eyes, put it on the forehead, and I don't feel the extra powder on my skin. I would say that the hourglass tends to be a little bit more it's not going to look glowy underneath, but it's not going to be a flat matte. It might give me a little bit more of a sheen, whereas the Sigma Soft Focus is going to be a little bit more airbrushed or look a little bit more like you have a filter on your face. The third powder was an OG Holy Grail that I used for years. So right now the two, well, I'm using the Sigma a lot and I was using the Hourglass because it was in my project pan and I wanted to get rid of it. But the one that I was using well before those two was the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. So I don't typically have that in my collection and I, I, I'm not reaching for it currently, but that has been a holy grail for me. It's great for dry skin. It'll set underneath the eyes without being too heavy or caking, without sticking to dry patches. I can use it on my forehead. I don't get like flashback or white cast or anything like that. It's just an overall good powder, but that one I would say is a little bit heavier than the Hourglass. The Sigma is a little bit heavier than the Hourglass, but I would be more apt to reach for the Sigma over the Laura Mercier because the Sigma is going to give you more of like that soft focused airbrush look, whereas the Laura Mercier, I feel like just it's like a basic powder when you're setting underneath your eyes. So the Hourglass is my favorite because it's nice and light, but I really do like the Sigma if I'm going to an event or something and I want that airbrush to look. Bronzer surprised me a little bit because when I was picking my bronzers, I found that I don't think I've really tried a ton of bronzers, which is funny because I have a ton of blushes, like a ton of blushes. But for bronzer, the one that I pretty much use, I'd say almost every single day, is from the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, and it is this sculpt shade here. It's honestly on its way out because I've had it for so long, but I love this shade because it's a good neutral. I have a hard time with my fair skin and my red hair. Sometimes when I'm using a bronzer, if they're too warm, they start to look orange on me. If they're too cool, they start to look muddy on me. This sculpt shade pulls as like a nice neutral bronze. It's buildable, it's comfortable on the skin. I do have, I typically go in with two bronzers, so I do have that one on right now. I'll go in with this one first and a more dense brush to kind of chisel out my cheekbones and then buff it in with another bronzer. So this one is used almost every single day. The other bronzer that I have on my face also from Charlotte Tilbury is the Airbrush Bronzer. This is the matte one. It's the big daddy here. I do have the shade medium for this one for the other Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. That one's the Fair to Light Compact. This is in the shade medium. It's not their lightest shade. I'm starting to get a little bit of a dent here. This one is a bit warmer than the Sculpt shade. So typically I'll go in with the Sculpt shade to get a little bit more of a chiseled look and then I'll take a fluffier brush and kind of blend it out with this bronzer. I like it because even though I want a dewy face, even though I want my skin to look glowy and hydrated, I want my bronzer matte. I want my bronzer matte. I want it to look like I have a sun-kissed complexion. So I feel like if it's too luminous, it it just doesn't look right to me. I just, I like my, my bronzer matte, okay? I can't really explain it. But this one's nice because it is nice and matte. It's buildable. It's not too heavy. I'm not gonna go in with such a heavy hand, but I can build it up and blend it out nicely. The third bronzer that I would say is in my top three is from Sigma, and it is the matte bronzer in the shade medium. If you want any of these Sigma products that I am mentioning, everything will be linked down below, but I do have a code with Sigma. It's Kbella to save you 10%. This bronzer, I didn't think I was going to like it at first because I felt like I was having to build it up too much. And then as I used it more and more, I realized I actually do really like it and I get good pigmentation. And yes, I, I typically tap in a couple times with any of my bronzers to build it up, but I appreciate that about a bronzer because if you get full pigment right away, then it can be difficult to blend out. So again, this one, it's in the shade medium. It's just a nice matte bronzer that sits on my skin nice. It's not too orange, but it does pull a little bit more on the warm side. I wouldn't say it's quite as neutral as the sculpt, but it's not going to pull red against my red hair, and I really appreciate that about this bronzer. Blush was a category where I had several, so my OG favorite blush of the bunch is from Buxom, and it is their Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush in the shade 
Seychelles. So although I want my bronzer to be matte, I do enjoy blush with a little bit of a sheen to give me a healthy looking glow. And I feel like Seychelles does that for me. I don't think it looks like much in the pan, but it's very pigmented. I like to take the Sigma, let me look up what it's called. Okay, I like to take the Sigma F40 Large Angled Contour and I will dip into my blush and kind of press it onto the cheeks. And I like it because I feel like it's just a nice shape for my cheeks. I don't know, maybe I have a, a small face and I'll pat it on first, but then you can blend it out and I can also hit up the apples of my cheeks and this Seychelles shade. It's not what I'm wearing today. I don't think I'm wearing any of these blushes today. I can't, can't even remember what blush I'm wearing. Charlotte Tilbury. Anyway. This blush right here, it is very pigmented. So I like this brush because it is dense but also fluffy so I can get the pigment where I want it and then blend it out. But this right here in Seychelles just gives me a nice, like almost rosy cheek look, not quite sunburnt because it's not that deep, but like a rosy cheek kind of look, a mauve type of shade with a little bit of sheen with no specks of glitter. I love that. I also fell in love with this Gucci blush here. This is 05 Rosy Beige. I picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale, and let me tell you, this was a pricey blush, but I would say that it is so worth it. This one is more matte, but it's not a flat matte on my face. Again, it gives me just this nice mauve toned look, almost like maybe I've been outside, but maybe outside in the winter, and I'm almost like kissed by the cold or something like that but it's just a beautiful blush again very pigmented I like to tap it on the high points and then blend it out and put a little bit on the apples and it's just a beautiful shade it's a nice formula very comfortable I find that I have to tell myself like put this one away when it's been out for a while but I want to get my money's worth so I actually should probably bring it out again However, if I had to name a favorite blush formula, I would have to say that it is the Pat McGrath blushes. I have several of them. This is the one I've been wearing a lot lately. This is in the shade Nude Venus 2. I like it because it gives me a sheen without any chunks of glitter, without any specks. I love the formula. It's very comfortable, very very blendable, but also buildable, and it lasts on my cheeks. My cheeks don't eat it throughout the day. This was the first one that I got in the shade Nymphette, and then I also do have this little trio that is no longer available. This is the Divine Blush and Glow Trio. I'm having a hard time talking in Galactic Sun. This right here is Divine Rose. I love this one, super pigmented. This one is a little bit more matte. This one has a little bit more of a sheen in Desert Orchid. I just think the, the formula and the quality of these Pat McGrath blushes are great. That's why I keep purchasing them and repurchasing them. I really like how they make my skin and my face look hydrated and healthy without the specks of glitter. And it doesn't look bad if I go in with a highlighter after because I'm always gonna highlight so it's not too shimmery that I already look highlighted. Next up is highlighter and I feel like more and more people are kind of saying that they're out of their highlighter phase, out of their highlighter era. I am not, I am still very much into a highlighter but here's the thing about me. I don't want a subtle highlight but I don't want glitter. Okay, I don't like chunky highlighters, I don't want glitter. I want it to melt into the skin, but I wanna look like I'm in twilight, like I'm glowing. Can you see my cheek right now? I do have highlighter on. So it looks like my skin, but almost like a glass skin effect. The highlighter that I'm wearing right now is from Natasha Denona. It is the Super Glow Highlighter in the shade Fair. This one is my favorite. This one is my absolute favorite because it really packs a punch. It gives you that high shine and that beaming highlight, but again, no glitter, no chunks. It just blends into the skin and really makes my skin look super healthy. I've also really been enjoying this highlighter from Sigma. This is in the shade Twilight. Now this one, I almost feel looks a little bit more of like a rose gold on me, which I appreciate. When I look at it in the pan, I'm like, is it pink? Is it peach? Is it champagne? I don't know. But when I put this one on the face, can you see there? It just gives me like, like a rose gold highlight. Let's see if you can see it there. It's probably hard with the lighting. But again, this one is beautiful because I can put it on the face. It's going to give me that beaming glow, but there are no chunks of glitter, no specks of glitter. It's just going to look like my skin, but that I'm glowing. And the last highlighter is actually in a palette. This is another one that is beaming, but also kind of an OG here. So it is from Benefit. Let me hold the brush so it doesn't fall out. Cookie. 
right here. I love this shade cookie. Again, it's going to pack a punch. It's going to give you that beaming glow like you are shining from outer space or something like that. It's not subtle by any means, but it does the same thing. There are no specks of glitter. There's nothing chunky about it. It just kind of melts into the skin and my skin looks like it's glowing. For lip liner. Now I do have to say, the shades are going to be very similar, but they are three different brands, three different formulas. One of them I don't think you can get anymore. It's from Natasha Denona and it was from her My Dream collection in the I Need a Nude Lip Crayon in Natasha. It's one of those where you sharpen it, but I love it because it's super creamy. Very, very creamy. It doesn't tug on the lips. It doesn't drag on the lips, but it's gonna last, okay? It's going to last. It's not gonna smudge off when, I'm start, when I start to drink or eat or anything like that. You can still see the lip line. So I really, really like the comfortability of that formula. The same way that I love my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude, it's the same type of pencil that you kinda sharpen, I was gonna say twist up, you don't twist up, that you sharpen this one right here, I would say, is a little bit less creamy than the Natasha Denona. The Den Natasha Denona glides on a little bit easier and it is a little bit creamier, but this is also just as creamy, just as long lasting. I can get a nice line with it. I do really appreciate the formula. I had Pillow Talk, used it up. Iconic Nude is getting a lot smaller. The next third and final lip liner, I don't know why I'm talking about them so quickly. I guess I just don't have much to say about lip liner, is one that you don't have to sharpen. So if you're not into sharpening, this one could be for you. This is from BK Beauty and it's in the shade Warm Spice. Now this one I have to say, I love the formula but I don't necessarily love the shape of the lip liner itself. It's a little bit thicker. So whereas with these two you can kind of sharpen them to a point where it's a little bit more thin, this one covers more of my lip but I do really like the formula. It's not quite as, looks very similar to Iconic Nude. This is the shade Warm Spice if I didn't tell you. It's not quite as creamy as the Natasha Denona and it's not quite as long wearing as Natasha Denona or Charlotte Tilbury, but it is still a very nice lip liner. Where I put it on is where it's going to be. It's not going to bleed out. It's going to give me a good amount of wear. It's not gonna wear away completely when I'm eating or drinking, and I really enjoy this formula. If you do want anything from BK Beauty, K Bella 10 will save you 10%. I will have everything linked down below, but this lip liner formula is also my favorite, and I really love Warm Spice. Okay, lipsticks. In going with the Natasha Denona, <laughs> lip liner. I do really love the Natasha Denona lipstick in, uh, I think it's the shade Natasha, but it was from the My Dream collection because I heard people say that the original Nat Natasha shade was a little bit different. This is from the My Dream collection, and I'll tell you why this, why I like this one. I'm going to swatch it right underneath here. This was the lip liner. This is the lipstick. So here's the thing. Very creamy, very pigmented, but this one has a shine to it already. It almost looks like you have lip gloss without having lip gloss on. It gives you a nice shiny finish, but it's also not slipping all over the lips. I've had shiny lipsticks before where you put them on and like they're slip sliding all over, they're getting all over the place, they're wearing off. Of course, I mean, it's a lipstick, it's gonna transfer if you're eating or drinking, but not to the point where it's completely off my lips. This is a very beautiful shade, very beautiful texture, very comfortable on the lips. So I really like this one when I want more of a shine to my lips without wearing a gloss. Another favorite of mine, this one is my favorite to throw in my bag, take to work if I don't wanna have a lip liner underneath, if I don't, if I want like a no mess, like a no mess kind of lipstick, I'm gonna reach for MAC Cosmetics. This is the shade Blankety. I will swatch this one right underneath the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I typically wear these in conjunction with each other. This one is a little bit more pink, but it's almost a cooler toned pink. I believe it is an amplified cream. I was gonna say cream sheen and I would have been wrong. It's an amplified cream. So you get high pigment right off the bat, but it does have more of a sheen. It's not quite as shiny as the Natasha Denona, but you do have more of a sheen. This looks beautiful paired with the Iconic Nude shade. This one I just throw in the bag, go. I don't need a mirror, I don't need a lip liner. It's like no fuss. The next one is the one I'm wearing on my lips today. And this one is new, but it is the one that I am wearing the most. Like I had to go get a passport picture taken today and so that's why my makeup looks the way that it looks. And I was like, what's gonna be like an easy no fuss lipstick? 
and it is the one that came in the full fantasy collab between Lunar Beauty and Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is the Lanny shade. So it's the one that is a little bit more pink. I think the shade that Laura created, Mora, was a little bit more peach, if I'm not mistaken. Now this one has that cream sheen as well. You can see it's not quite as cool of a pink as Blankety, but you still do have a very pink undertone. This also is not quite as shiny as the Natasha Denona, but the thing I like about this is this is going to last on you. It is very long lasting through eating, through drinking. Yes, you're gonna get transfer, but by the end of the day, it still looks like I have lipstick on, and that's why I love this shade. I have to say, I'm not typically a lip gloss gal. I like a little lip, lip gloss here and there, but I'm not reaching for a lip gloss every time I put my makeup on. And I also need a few things for my lip gloss, okay? I don't want it to be super highly pigmented because I'm typically putting it on over a lipstick. I'm not just doing lip liner and lip gloss, but I don't like it to be sticky. I don't wanna like feel my lips pulling apart and I don't like it to be gritty or grainy. So one lipstick formula that I absolutely love is from Lunar Beauty. This is the most pigmented one that I'm gonna talk about today. This one is in the shade Moon. This one does have a pigment to it. So this I will only wear if I have like some kind of nude lipstick underneath because you can see here, you do have the nude pigment and this one's just shiny and glossy. It makes my lips look nice and healthy and juicy. There's no like extra glitters or shine or anything like that but it's just like a nice overall lip gloss. But like I said, there is a little bit of pigment to it. Another one that I love, I had a different shade. It's the Lawless Forget the Filter. This one is in the shade Lavender Sorbet. I had like the clear rose one, but I can't find it. I don't know where it is and it was like almost gone. I literally don't know where it is, but I liked that one because it was clear. This Lemon Sorbet, getting all over, is going to have a tint to it. I feel like it's a little bit more subtle of a tint than the nude in Lunar Beauty. This smells like sorbet. It smells so good. This has a nice lavender scent, but I really, really like this one because it gives you a nice juicy look to your lips. It makes your lips look really plump. Like I said, this isn't my favorite shade, but I really love this formula because it's super comfortable. Now, if you're looking for one that is going to have some sparkle, but it's not gonna be sticky, and it's gonna make your lips look juicy and healthy, I'd have to say the Unearthly, Unearthly Heather Austin collab. This is the lip gloss in the shade Omen. I have been reaching for this one a ton. The reason why, let me put it underneath the other two, is because, so it has this like clear base to it where it's not gonna change the pigment of the lipstick, but it has multi-dimensional like specks in here. I can see purple, blue, orange, gold. Like I can see little specks of shimmer or glimmer, but it is not gritty at all. It's super comfortable on the lips. It smells so good. I love the smell of this. It's like sweet. It smells delicious. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of like holographic looking. It really hits the light. Those extra sparkles help it to really hit the light and stand out without being uncomfortable on the lips. I feel like brows are not a very exciting category. I am still rocking with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the shade Caramel. That's what's on my brows today. Still rocking for it. I've repurchased so many of these. It stands the test of time. I like it because my brows are non-existent. I have to draw a brow. So I really appreciate how like thin and fine it is to where I can draw the brow, but then also shade it in. If I'm not using this pencil, I did recently finish up, so I'll insert a picture of it, the Patrick Ta Brow Pencil. That one, what did I, what shade did I have? I wanna say maybe a blonde shade. There weren't as, mon as many shades as the ABH, so that's why when I did repurchase, I repurchased the ABH. But I really liked the Patrick Ta Brow Pencil because again, it was nice and fine and thin to where I could create the shape and fill in hair-like strokes. That one I feel like was maybe a little bit waxier, if I'm remembering correctly, than the ABH, so it felt like the my brows were staying where I drew them. You know, like the, the pigment wasn't like going all over my face or whatever. But then, so that's what I like to use to draw a brow. Then to set it, 
It used to be the ABH Clear Brow Gel, but now I would have to say that it is the Patrick Ta, uh, what is this called? The Major Brow Lamination Gel. This is like hairspray for your brows. If you don't want hairspray for your brows, don't get this. This is like hairspray for your brows. I will like use it to push my brows up and then I'll take the spoolie very quickly and brush them where I want them to be and they'll stay like that all day. We are ending with mascara, an OG favorite of mine, Maybelline The Rocket. Again, you're not gonna have a lot of drugstore in here, but The Rocket is a great volumizing mascara. It's not clumpy. You can go in with a couple coats and you're not gonna have spider lashes. I don't get the waterproof and I feel like it's just as long wearing. I get the blackest black shade and I just really like the va va voom of my lashes. But another favorite of mine that is not drugstore, also for volume, is the Lancome Monsieur Big. Now this one, I do go in with a couple coats, but it can kind of get clumpy and spider-like if you're not careful, but it really gives me the volume that I want my lashes to have. After I go in with one of my volumizing mascaras, I like to follow it up with a lengthening mascara, and my favorite is the Benefit Roller Lash. I will take that and kind of brush the clumps away. It separates and lengthens and makes my lashes look nice and full and long without the clumps. Okay, but that's gonna do it for this video. I think it's a long one, top three in every category. I've seen some of my friends kind of break it up into different categories, but because we skipped over some, I thought I would put it together. But I would love to know your thoughts down below. What are some of your favorite products? Did I mention any of your favorites? Do we share some favorites? What are your top three? Pick a category, do all of them, do some of them. I don't care, but I wanna hear some of your favorite products down below because if I didn't mention them, I might want to try them. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe before you go. That way I can see you in the next one. Bye.